I would like now to introduce our next speaker, Marcus de Sotoy. Marcus de Sotoy is the Simoni Professor for the Public Understanding of Science and Professor of Mathematics at Oxford University. He is author of three books, The Music of the Primes, Finding Moonshine, and The Number Mysteries. He has presented numerous radio and TV series for the BBC. In 2010, he received the Order of the British Empire from the Queen for services to science. De Soto's participation has been key to many serpentine marathons. The Map Marathon in 2010, the Garden Marathon in 2011, the Memory Marathon in 2012, and also the 89 Plus Marathon last year. Today, De Soto will be presenting a talk entitled Death by Mathematics. Please welcome Max De Soto. Just wait for my first slide to come up before I kick off. So. Great, there we go. So let's start off with a little warm up question for you to get your brain cells firing before we do a bit of mathematics. Um, there's one species which uh, a story has arisen about its uh, particular population dynamics. Uh, uh, the story goes that this species, um, every four years, throws itself over a cliff in a kind of mass suicide pact. Uh, so I just want to see um, what, uh, how you divide up here. Does anyone think that it's um, muskrats who are the species that go over a cliff every four years in this mass suicide pact? Yeah, uh, hands up for any muskrats here. No muskrats? Okay. Um, how about voles? Does anyone think it's voles? A few, a few going for voles. Uh, um, okay, what, what about lemmings? Anyone think it's lemmings that... Yes, here we go. Ooh, oh, he put up his hand. Yes. Oh, okay. So you're all following like lemmings. Yes, that is the, uh, the correct answer is lemmings here because the story goes that um, the population seems to just plummet every four years. And a theory had to be developed about why the lemmings suddenly disappeared. Um, and, and this theory came about that uh, they, they live quite near cliffs and um, they thought they might be throwing themselves over a cliff. And actually, this seemed to be confirmed when Walt Disney, who used to make uh, d uh, nature programs, I, I don't know if any of you are old enough, I certainly remember the nature programs that Walt Disney made, they made this program um, actually catching the lemmings in action, falling over the side of the cliff. Um, so here are the lemmings coming up to the side of the cliff. Um, some of them are a bit nervous about uh, what's going to happen next. The music builds. This ocean, and off they go. Absolutely amazing. So they seem to be proved this Walt Disney footage seemed to confirm that uh, every four years this is, seems to be what's happening. And as soon as one goes, they all start following. Except for this one guy here is saying, this is a really bad idea, guys. You know, really, don't go, don't go. But it seems like, oh, he goes as well. So, um, so it seems to be confirmed. Every four years, there seems to be this strange behavior of the lemmings. Um, until a few years ago, the cameraman who filmed this sequence came clean. Those lemmings did not want to go over that cliff. In fact, the camera crew had set up this spinning plate, which you couldn't see, and there was a, um, an assistant putting lemmings on the little thing, and they would fly off into the air, um, forced over by the, the camera crew. So, um, so it turns out it's not some mass suicide pact, but we still had to come up with some explanation for why the population did plummet every four years. Now, it turns out it was mathematics that was killing these lemmings, um, something I think my kids would probably agree with. Yeah, math's incredibly deadly. Um, but there's actually an equation which controls how the population dynamics from one season to another goes. Um, so uh, I've got a, I simplified the equation a little bit for us to be able to see it in action. Um, so basically, uh, you have start off with a number of lemmings, and then each season, uh, the lemmings kind of multiply. So in this little first example, I'm going to have them doubling 
each season, okay? But not, there's not enough resources for all of them to survive. So there's a little equation, a feedback equation, which says how many will not survive. So you take the previous generation, multiply it by the current generation, divide by 10, which is kind of my maximum population in this small example, and that's how many won't survive. Um, now, I think maths um, is not a spectator sport. Um, you have to get involved. So what I'm going to do is try and run this mathematical equation uh, with you. So what I would like, we're going to do a little experiment. We're going to start off with two lemmings. So could I have two volunteers to play my first generation of lemmings, please? Um, uh, anybody uh, brave enough to? Excellent, sir. Um, and I need a woman as well, else this won't get going. OK, up you come. Uh, so don't worry, it's maths, not biology. So if you guys come up and say, gosh, he's really getting into it. Look at that little lemming actions. Um, OK, so these lemmings, um, the next season, they give rise to two more lemmings. So I need two more volunteers who are the next generation. Absolutely, wonderful, thank you. And um, yes, the, the lady over there, so if you'd like to come up. Um, but not all of them are going to survive. So we have to run this little equation. So we do previous generation 2 times current generation 4. Um, so 2 times 4, 8. So divide by 10, that's roughly 1 is not going to survive. So we've got to sort out uh, which one of you is going to go. So um, could I have three chairs, please? Because uh, what we'll do is we'll run a little game of musical lemmings. Uh, and we'll see uh, which of you. So it, it's a real fight for survival here. I haven't done a health and safety, so please don't um, throw yourselves over the cliff yet. Um, great. Let's, uh, I'm a big fan of symmetry, so I'm going to make a little triangle here. Um, excellent. Um, good. So hopefully there's a bit of sound on here. Excellent. So let's cue the lemming music. A little bit of lemming dancing. So only three survive in this particular generation. One will not survive. Let's see, are there any hoverers here? I don't think they're very competitive, you know. I'd be hovering over the chairs. But uh, So when the music stops, of course, you have to fight for a chair. Oh! Well, it's pretty fierce competition. But I'm afraid I think that's, uh, that's you off the side. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to kick you over. So let's uh, jump for me, please. There we go. Over the side of the cliff. Very sorry. But here are three surviving lemmings. So if you could get up, right, excellent. So three doubles up in the next generation to six. So I need three more volunteers. So if you're now mortified and never going to go anywhere near the stage, or you're thinking, yes, I can get that chair, could I have three more volunteers, please? Play the next, excellent. I will start picking on people if you know. Good, so that's two. I just need a third to volunteer, please. There are people, look at him, he's got his head down. Please don't look at me. Excellent, yes, yes, wonderful. Up you come. Oh, right, okay, don't worry, there's another round. <laughs> um, okay, so three times six is 18, we divide by 10, so this time we're gonna have only uh, four surviving, two dies. So another chair, please, because we need uh, a little bit more survival here. Excellent, so uh, symmetry, that's a square now. Excellent. Uh, but I'm afraid two of you are not going to survive, so um, let's cue the lemming music. In fact, two are going to bite the dust. I find that lemming dancing helps it to get, yeah, like she's getting into the groove. Excellent. Oh! oh. oh. I, I, I'm going to have to do your talk for you later on. That's uh, so aggressive. <laughs> I know, so aggressive. It's excellent. That, that was your partner in the first round. <laughs> excellent. So we've got four lemmings in this season. So uh, next season, we double up. We get eight lemmings. So I need four more volunteers, please. So yes, there's already somebody here. And this guy with his head down, I'm going to get him to come up. No, please don't get me up. You're sick. Oh dear, that's, uh, well, a sick lemming. Yeah, we don't want a sick lemming. So good, there, there's two. I just need two more, please. Excellent. And one more. This is the last round, so, you know, this is your last chance to, to have a go at my lemmings game. Great, all right. Oh, if it's the last chance, I'm up. Okay, excellent. So what happens now? We've got four times eight, so that's 32. We divide by 10, that's roughly three. Um, so we're going to have five survivors. So oh, another chair, please. Let's make it, oh, we're up to a pentagon. Excellent. Good. There we go. Please don't shoot off the side like this gentleman here did. Um, OK, are you ready? Let's clue the lemming music. So three is the magic number this time. 
three will not survive, five will. Good lemming. She, she survived the whole thing. She's a great, 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 great grandmother, I think. <laughs> and she hovers. I like that. OK, so oh, a bit of battle over there. So off you go. Three over the side of the cliff. Let's kick you over. Um, now, let's get our five surviving lemmings up, because something interesting happens with this equation now. You've seen the population growing and growing and growing. But if we run the equation now, what happens is that 5 doubles up to 10. 5 times 10 uh, is 50. Divide by 10, 5 die, and 5 survive. So now we get a stability with this particular equation, and the population stabilizes. So let's give our five uh, surviving lemmings, especially our great, 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 great mother. That's Isaac, and you can go back to your seats. Thank you. So with this particular equation, we get stability in the population of lemmings. But actually, lemmings are a little bit more productive than just doubling. Um, so actually, if we triple the number of lemmings each season, we see a different dynamic starting to kick in. So now we run the same experiment, two triples up to, to six. Uh, we get five surviving. And if we run this, we just see a ping-ponging between five and eight. So now there isn't stability, but there's still periodicity and a pattern there. The population of lemmings in uh, Norway and the Arctic actually are a little bit more productive, and they have a rate of 3.5, multiplying by 3.5 each generation. And here we see a new pattern emerging, again periodic with a pattern, but every four years the population of lemmings plummets. And it seems to be this feedback equation which is controlling the dynamics of this particular population of lemmings. But what's interesting is the pattern suddenly disappears if you crank the multiplicity up a little bit more. We heard a little bit about climate change in the last talk. Well, climate change, is, uh, one of the problems is that chaos gives us very little control on what the dynamics are. And there's a threshold moment beyond which suddenly the patterns disappear in these population of lemmings and chaos ensues. So if I quadruple the population of lemmings each season, then rather than a nice pattern, it's incredibly difficult to predict from one season to the next quite how many lemmings there'll be. And this is so sensitive that if I just make a small change in the number of lemmings, stick one more lemming in there in this very large population, it completely can change the prediction of what's going to happen next. And you can see, if you were looking at this, you would get very worried at some point that maybe there's some factor which is causing the lemmings to suddenly disappear. Maybe it's environmental. Maybe it's something that humans are doing. Or maybe it's just the mathematics of chaos at work, and you're not going to have that sort of control. So what I wanted to issue was a slight warning that mathematics can be controlling things and be quite hard to read, and that often what you might think is something that you're doing, maybe it's just natural mathematics at heart, which is killing the lemmings. Now, mathematics isn't just deadly. It can also help you to survive. And there is one very interesting species um, which uses mathematics, a particular bit of mathematics which I spend a lot of my time researching, which is prime numbers. There's a very interesting cicada which uh, lives in the forest in North America, and it has an incredibly strange life cycle. So um, this particular cicada, uh, every 17 years, it hides underground doing absolutely nothing for 17 years. Then after 17 years, the cicadas emerge en masse into the forest. And they party away, they sing away. Here's the sound of one cicada. You have to multiply this by several million. The sound of the forest is so unbearable that people generally move out for this 17th year. There's even a website that you can plan your marriage to make sure you avoid any cicadas that are around at the time. But after six weeks, they party, they lay eggs, they eat the trees. And then after six weeks, they all die. And the forest goes quiet again for another 17 years before the next brood, the next generation, appears. Now, it's an extraordinary um, life cycle, 17 years. The fact that they can count 17 years is already quite extraordinary. I mean, there's nothing in the natural cycle which has a 17-year cycle. Uh, there's 11 years with the sunspots on the, uh, on the sun. But, um, so we're not even quite sure how they do it. But they, they very rarely appear a year early or a year late. But why are they choosing 17? This is an indivisible number, a prime number. Is that important? Well, it seems to be, because there's another species of cicada in another area of North America that has a 13-year life cycle. And if you go over North America, all you see are 13 and 17. You never see 12, 14, 15, 16, or 18. So there seems to be something about these primes, mathematics, which is helping these cicadas to survive. We're not quite sure what it is. What we think it is a way of avoiding some sort of predator. 
Um, so for example, let's run a little uh, experiment. Suppose we have a predator that also appears periodically in the forest every six years, and it tries to time its arrival to sort of knock out the cicadas. Now suppose you had a cicada that appears every nine years in the forest. Well, after six, nine, as soon as you get to year 18, it's both divisible by six and nine, and so the cicada meets the predator, gets wiped out. But if the cicada has a different life cycle, for example, it appears every seven years. Well, seven years, it's appearing more often in the forest, so maybe there's a chance it's going to get eaten more quickly. But no, now the primeness of the number seven, the indivisibility of this, means that it can keep out of sync. And so it doesn't meet this predator appearing every six years until year 42. So it seems like there was a real competition in the forests in North America where the cicada, maybe the predator found the prime the cicada was using, the cicada had to move, uh, and eventually the cicada found the prime numbers 13 and 17. The predator didn't know it math, its maths, died out. A good message for everyone. If you don't know your maths, you die in this world. Um, the cicada is left with this wonderful prime number life cycle um, uh, which, which um, uh, it was lovely. I went to, uh, to Nashville area and I saw the 13 year cicadas arriving. And uh, you know, the locals said, wow, mate, we haven't seen these cicadas for, for 13 years. And, uh, uh, and they still keep on this cycle. And these primes seem to be the key to their evolutionary survival. So maths can be helpful. And in a way, I think it's really why I became a mathematician. Uh, because for me, mathematics is a very special subject because once you prove something in mathematics, it's not going to become extinct. It has a permanence about it. The things that the ancient Greeks proved 2,000 years ago are as true today as they were when, they pro when Euclid proved them. And I think there's very little in our world that we can say is as permanent, perhaps, as mathematics, as timeless as mathematics. And there's a, a quote I love from a book which really uh, sort of inspired me to become a, mathematician's, a mathematician um, by G.H. Hardy, a mathematician's apology. He wrote, Archimedes will be remembered when Aeschylus is forgotten because languages die and mathematical ideas do not. Immortality may be a silly word, but probably a mathematician has the best chance of whatever it may mean. Thank you. <laughs>